Hey friends, and welcome in to A Walk Through the Word, Daily Bread with Crystal Fry. I am your host, Crystal Fry, and in today's episode, we're looking at Genesis chapter 50, verse 20, and how God can take the bad things that happen in our lives and turn them into something good. Thank you for being here with me today, and I pray that you will listen with an open heart to hear the Word of God speaking to you. All right, friends, let's dive in. God's Word is powerful. The missing link is our identity in Christ. When we know who we are and who He created us to be, that is when we can truly walk in freedom. You are never alone. There is hope, and that hope is Jesus Christ. Today we're talking about how incredible God is to take the bad and turn it into something good. We're looking at Genesis chapter 50, verse 20, which reads, You intended to harm me, but God intended it for good to accomplish what is now being done, the saving of many lives. Let's start with a little bit of high-level background for anyone who isn't familiar with the story of Joseph in the Old Testament. Joseph was one of 12 sons of Jacob. Jacob, whose name was changed to Israel after he wrestled with God, was the son of Isaac, who was the son of Abraham. Joseph was Jacob's favorite, and his brothers were extremely jealous of him. So much so that they sold him to merchants who were going to Egypt for 20 shekels and convinced Jacob that his favorite son was dead. Now, I don't know what the conversion rate would have been back then, but today, 20 Israeli shekels equals $5.86 in U.S. money. Once in Egypt, the merchants sold Joseph to Potiphar, who was one of Pharaoh's officials. To make a long story short, Joseph is wrongfully accused by Potiphar's wife gets thrown into Pharaoh's prison, interprets dreams for two of the prisoners, winds up interpreting Pharaoh's dreams, tells them that there are seven years of great abundance to be followed by seven years of great famine in the land, gives him a plan on how to prepare, and Pharaoh puts him in charge of all of Egypt. Joseph's brothers come to Egypt to buy grain from him during the famine. Joseph reveals himself to his brothers Pharaoh grants the best land in Egypt to Joseph's father and brothers, and then after Jacob dies, Joseph's brothers get worried that he's now going to hold this grudge against them for the wrong that they committed, and that's where we find today's scripture. For the full story, read Genesis chapter 37 through 50. It's pretty intense. As Joseph's brothers come to him, Seeking mercy, he reassures them and basically says, Look, you intended to harm me, but God intended this for good. He used your actions to put me in a place to be able to provide for people during this famine and save many lives. Think about that. If Joseph's brothers hadn't been so jealous of him. They never would have sold him to the merchants going to Egypt. The merchants wouldn't have had him to sell to Potiphar. He wouldn't have been in Potiphar's house for Potiphar's wife to accuse him and have him thrown into Pharaoh's prison. He wouldn't have been in the prison to interpret dreams. He wouldn't have been called to interpret the dreams of Pharaoh. Pharaoh wouldn't have put Joseph in charge of Egypt. There wouldn't have been a plan to store grain during the abundant years. And when the years of famine came, Egypt and the surrounding areas would have simply been decimated. Now, 
this all took years to unfold. And the Lord was with Joseph every step of the way. Through the bad and the good, Joseph remained faithful to God, and God stayed with Joseph, walking him down the path that God intended for him. So I want you to take this story of Joseph and today's scripture and remember that even when people intend to harm you, when they try to capitalize on your mistakes, when they spread rumors or talk about you behind your back out of jealousy, when you're wrongfully accused, when nothing seems to be working out, Remember that God is working on your behalf, and what God has for you, no man can take away. What a person does in an attempt to harm you, God can use for good and to accomplish good for others if you remain faithful to him and allow him to work things out in his timing. It's so easy for us to get disheartened by situations and circumstances that don't look favorable to us. I mean, let's face it, none of us look forward to hard times and difficult situations. We want our lives to go smoothly, easy, be full of the abundant goodness of God in the things that we can see. But we don't always know what the road to get there is going to look like. We usually don't get a heads up when our faith and our faithfulness is going to be tested. We're usually not prepared for the betrayal of someone close to us or for false accusations that create extreme difficulty for us. But we can decide to commit our lives to the Lord, to put our faith in Him, to trust Him to know what He's doing, to trust His leading and guidance, to listen to Him speaking to us through His Word, and to obey His commands. We can choose. We can make that decision. God has taken some really hard things, some really just devastating situations, and has used them for good. We just have to trust him, especially when it's hard and when it hurts. Sometimes it's minute by minute, hour by hour, day by day, but we can trust him because God is God and God is good. No matter what is happening in your life right now, God sees you and he loves you more than you could ever possibly imagine. It brings him no joy to see you hurting But in this life, sometimes we hurt. We can take comfort in knowing that we never have to go through it alone. He is always with us. Thank you, friend, for being here with me today to talk about how God can turn our bad into good. I'd love to know your thoughts on today's episode and what this passage means to you, so leave me a comment and let me know. And don't forget to go out and leave a review for the podcast as well. I appreciate them so much. I love the feedback. Keep it coming. Join me in our next episode where I have the awesome pleasure of talking with Jasmine Walters, the Florida girl with spunk. It's a high-energy conversation about being on fire for the Lord. Until then! 
Hey friend, thank you so much for joining me on the show today. It's my pleasure as always to be here with you. If what you listened to today resonated with you, if you enjoyed listening to the show, do me a favor, go ahead and like and subscribe to this podcast and leave a review. Those reviews are so helpful. I can't even tell you how much I appreciate each and every single one of them. And go ahead and share this episode out with a friend. Invite them along for a walk through the word and let's enjoy that daily bread together. See you tomorrow.